The Pacific Northwest is absolutely boiling. It is sweltering under a heat dome. So we want to bring in Jeff Berardelli, uh, our CBS News meteorologist, to talk a little bit more about what's going on in uh, the Northwest, these unprecedented temperatures. And I know, like, you know, in the news, we tend to throw around unprecedented a lot. Um, but can you give us a sense of just how out of the ordinary these temperatures are? I'm glad you asked that question because I said the exact same thing last night here on CBSN that, you know, we throw around unprecedented, but this is otherworldly. I mean, we've never seen anything like this in the Pacific Northwest, shattering all time records by several, if not more degrees. So let me show you some of those temperatures, uh, you know, and meteorologists saw this a week ago. We saw this on our computer maps and we were thinking, is this even possible? Well, it's possible, and it's exactly mm -hmm. what happened. So let me show you. Uh, Portland, 116 degrees. That is a new all-time record. The old all-time record, not for the date, not for the month, but for all year, going back, you know, a century or so, um, is 107. So we shattered that by 9 degrees. Seattle broke its all-time record by around 5 degrees, just to give you an idea. Canada hit 117. They're old all-time national record was 113 degrees. So talk about unprecedented. This is a step above that language, if you will, uh, because, you know, to break an all-time <laughs> record by one or two degrees is incredibly impressive. To do it by all these degrees is virtually impossible in a normal natural world. But this world is now unnatural. It's not normal because we have warmed it through climate change. So this is the heat dome you were just talking about. This is about to be honest with you, and I want to be honest, the smaller portion of mm -hmm. it right around here is about a 1 in 10,000 10, year event. 1 in 10,000 year event. That's how far from average it is. Now, generally, the whole thing on wow. average is about a 1 in 1,000 year event. That's in a statistically historical world, not in our world today. In our world today, that kind of heat is becoming a lot more probable, and heat waves like this will become more routine as the decades go on as we continue uh, to warm. So this is our departure from normal, uh, you know, and we're going to continue to see this heat wave last for at least a few days, Emory. Okay, so I want to get into what you just said about, you know, the future and whether we'll see more of these heat waves. But in regards to what's happening right now in the Pacific Northwest, you said mm -hmm. those temperatures will stick around for a few more days. Just when will people get relief in this part of the country? So it depends on where you are. So along the coast and, and from the Cascades westward, we're getting a little cooling influence right there. So you can see Portland today is going to be 95 and Seattle's 94. This is still extremely hot for these cities, but it's going to be 20 <laughs> degrees less yeah. today in Portland than it was yesterday. 20 degrees less and still they, they are in a historic heat wave. Now, east of the mountains, it's ridiculously hot again. Pasco, which is Washington, 119. If they do get to 119, that would break an all-time record high for the state of Washington. We tied it yesterday. We could break it uh, today. Now, as we head into Wednesday, notice these temperatures come down a notch, but it's still no picnic. It's still 112 degrees in places like Spokane. And in this area, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, away from the coast again, uh, and Montana, it's going to stay hot through July 4th to be honest with you, although not quite as hot. So the heat wave will get a little more bearable, but it'll still be very hot out there. So we're going to see a little bit of relief along the coast. It's going to be much better, but inland it's going to remain this way for several days. So let's talk about, you know, what the sort of the bigger theme of what we're seeing here. Um, this is highly unusual, but is it going to be highly unusual in the coming years? I mean, is this a result of climate change? Yeah, so we have a natural pattern across the nation uh, and across the world right now, which is causing these extremes. We have a heat wave in the east. Obviously, it's not nearly as bad as the Pacific Northwest. But then you have climate change. Now, if you look, summer temperatures have warmed. There's a scale right there, two to four degrees across the west, especially the southwest, but even the Pacific Northwest seeing a lot of warming. So when you take a heat wave and you put it on top of two to four degrees of warming, it's obviously going to be an extreme heat wave. But it's not an increase of two to four degrees. Mathematically, that's not the way it works. So the averages go up two, three, four degrees. The extremes go up a lot more than that. So just to give you an idea, summer temperatures in Medford, Oregon, have gone up around 4.2 degrees since 1970. 
So it's been a, it's gone up four degrees in the last 50 years in this area, and it's continuing. So the Oregon Climate Assessment says that by 2100, if we keep burning fossil fuels at the pace we're doing it right now or close to it, we'll increase temperatures seven to 10 degrees above where they were in pre-industrial times. That's just a starting point. It's just a baseline. I wanna show you one other thing. So these are temperatures for the last 2000 years. The blue indicating temperatures below normal, below our modern normal, and the red indicating temperatures above normal. I'll completely step out of the picture for you and I'll zoom in to where we are right now. I mean, look at how high we've gone in just the past you know, century, century and a half or so. So uh, these are dire straits for us if we continue business as usual into the future, Amory. And, and so, you know, parts that are under this heat dome are also dealing with another huge environmental issue, um, a, a, a historic drought. And I've read, you know, some stuff about this and some have argued that this could be sort of the beginning of a mega drought, meaning a drought that could last, you know, not years, but maybe even decades. Can you tell us about the drought in the West and how this heat dome is impacting that? Right. So, you know, drought causes more heat waves and heat wave causes more droughts. It's a, it's a feedback loop. When it's dry, your atmosphere can actually get warmer because if it's very wet, a lot of the energy gets used to evaporate water. But if you don't have any water to evaporate, all the energy from the sun and all the energy from the heat goes into actually heating the air temperature. So this is the drought you were talking about. We are at, at the beginning of another mega drought. And by the way, it's the worst 22 year drought period that we've ever seen over the past 1200 years. We know that from the tree ring record uh, across the West. In fact, I just did a story in California. I met the scientist who's doing the study. So our drought started in uh, 2000, the year 2000. It's been 22 years. If you look at 22 year periods for the past 1200 years, this is the worst drought in the history of the West that we've experienced. This red area right here, that's 27% covered under exceptional drought, which is the highest category of drought. By the way, the old record is 11%. So it shattered that record. And combined heat and drought together, you asked the question about both of these. When you combine the two together, uh, climate change has made it five times more likely to see an extreme drought at the same time as you see an extreme heat wave. And you know, we may not see temperatures in Portland again in my lifetime, maybe, we'll see, that reach 116 degrees, but we will see another comparable heat wave like this somewhere else. Maybe it's across the Plain States, maybe it's in the Ohio Valley, maybe it's in the Northeast, it'll be in other parts of the world. But by the way, Anne-Marie, we will know very soon because we're doing an extreme climate weather assessment. Um, right now, it's being done in Europe on this Pacific Northwest heat wave. So we'll know within a few days, uh, it's called extreme weather attribution. Um, we'll know how much more likely climate change made it, how likely it was before climate change, how likely it is in the future. We'll know all those stats within the next week or so. Oh, well, that is very interesting. Jeff Berardelli, hope maybe we can have you back on to talk a little bit more about that, because I'd like to know uh, what the prognosis is for our future. Jeff, I can be thank here. you very much. You're welcome.